O Canal Tech está hoje no evento Empreenda Sem Fronteiras para falar com alguns dos mais bem-sucedidos empreendedores do mundo. Ao meu lado está Ryan Das, que é CEO e fundador do Digital Marketer. Hello, Ryan. Hi. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. So you said a lot of great stuff on the stage today, and I'll quote some phrases. Okay. So you can explain to me. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. So you said, define business by the people you serve, not the product you sell. Right. Can you explain this concept for us? Sure. You, you have a lot of businesses where the business is the product, and that's all they want to talk about. But the, the problem is products come and go. You think about every great product, it eventually gets surpassed by an even better product. And so if you, if you fall in love with your product, if you fall in love with the thing that you sell, then it, it, when it goes out of style or when somebody comes along with a better product, you're going to lose because you're putting all of your energy and all your effort and all of your heart into the product. If instead, and what I'm suggesting is fall in love with your market, fall in love with your customers, fall in love with, with the people that that you're serving, um, and it, as their tastes change, because you're talking to them, you'll know that, and you can make adjustments to your product, or even completely replace your products. But it, so often, we as business owners who fall in love with our products, we don't want to you know, kill them. They, they become these sacred cows, right? And sometimes you need to kill your sacred cow for the sake of your customers. So that's what I meant by that. Okay, that's great. So you you uh, also told us a story about a million dollar napkins, right? <laughs> and about those five step funnel. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that to us too? Sure. So I mean, I was in a pretty low point in my business career. This was back in 2006, and I was at a at a bar, as people so often do, um, you know, drinking away my my sorrows, and. Uh, And I was reminded of a conversation I had with, with a good friend where he said, if you can't describe your business model, if you can't describe how you get customers on a napkin, it's too complicated. And so often, businesses fail because they just get too complic complicated. They get too big and they, they crumble under their own weight. And I don't know why, but at that moment, that just that conversation that I had with them pulled in. So I, I grabbed a cocktail napkin and I borrowed a pen from the bartender and I just scribbled out, how do we get customers? How does it actually work? And I realized, well, generally we bring, you know, we drive traffic into a landing page where people opt in for something free. And then we follow up and we offer them a higher price item, what we call a tripwire or an entry point offer. Um, if they don't buy that, then we put them in a follow-up series to try to get them to buy that. If they do buy it, then we offer them our, our core offer, you know, the, the thing that we want. And if they don't, then we put them in a follow-up series to try to get them to buy that. And if they buy the core offer, we'll eventually try to sell them what we call a profit maximizer. So a higher ticket item that, uh, you know, that now they're ready for it. And that, that's kind of, if you think about that process of something free, something small, something bigger, something even bigger, I realize that it, it mirrors how dating relationships work. It starts with a simple, innocent conversation. It goes to meeting up for coffee and then going out to dinner and then going out to, you know, on more dates and then eventually getting married. And, and so on that napkin, I just, I structured that process for how it works in business. And I've applied that basic model of relationships to every business I've ever run. And it's been, it's been successful. It's very grounding. Great. And your company did a lot of knowledge tests to know more about the marketing. Can you tell me uh, something about those tests and what have you experienced from them? At Digital Marketer, we, we realized that digital marketing is becoming a profession. It's becoming something that, that people do in every business. You know, it used, just like every business has bookkeepers and accountants and every business will have a sales team. Now, digital marketing is a mature enough topic that There are people in most organizations today that need well-trained digital marketers, um, or they need to work with an agency or a consultant that has well-trained digital marketers on their team. It's not just this little optional extra that you don't just get to decide anymore. We don't really have to worry about Facebook and Google. You know, they have all the traffic. You have to worry about those properties now. So there's this big need for professional digital marketers, but there's nobody teaching how to be a professional digital marketer. You can't really go to college, go to university for it. Um, it, it and, and even if you're learning it in, in the course of a job, 
you're not getting testing and certification to where everybody knows that you know what you're talking about. Whereas if you're going to be a bookkeeper, you get trained, you get tested, and you get certified, and then you go do the work. So we decided to create that. Um, we wanted it for our own companies, and we knew that other businesses wanted it as well. And so that's why we created all of our different certifications. So we could take somebody who doesn't know anything. You know, we like to say they, they can't even spell SEO, and, uh, and now they can do it. <laughs> okay. So but what are the main skills for those people who want to work with digital marketing? There are eight critical what we call the eight critical core disciplines of digital marketing. The first one is, is conversion funnel design. So what I talked about today, that eight step value journey process. You need to, to know that well because everything else is a part of that. Everything else you know, fills into that. So um, there's customer value, what we call customer value optimization. That's, that's one. Um, paid traffic. So advertising through digital channels like Google and Facebook and YouTube is another one. Content marketing is critical. It's absolutely critical. You must be a, a really great content marketer. So is social and community. Uh, email marketing is, is another biggie. Search marketing would be the sixth one. And then uh, uh, analytics and optimization. So how, how do you, data and analytics. So how do you get the data and know what's working? And then conversion rate optimization is the eighth. So those are the eight critical core disciplines. Can you forecast some trends for the next uh, next months? Some of the big trends that I see coming though are trends in, in messaging apps. So now for example, Facebook Messenger and, and uh, other chat apps, they're being used right alongside email for communication by business and brands. We, at Digital Marketer, we close almost as many sales over Facebook Messenger as we do over the phone. With chat uh, chatbots? Chatbots are a big part of that. Absolutely. Um, I don't believe that chatbots are going to completely replace human-to-human -human selling, um, but I do believe that they can direct people to the right place and, and handle kind of that, that initial starter conversations so that by the time a salesperson is chatting with someone live, they barge into the chatbot conversation, then they're talking to somebody who's a little bit further down the sales process. So chatbots are big. I believe that, that chat in general, messenger, chat, that is the next email. That's the next big thing that's, that's gonna happen in digital marketing. Great. And what do you learn about Brazil, Brazilian market? About, do, do you know something or any cases or anything that you can, you can share with us? This was my first visit to Brazil. And, and uh, I know some Brazilians. We have a, a, a large number of Brazilians in our in, in Digital Marketer Lab and in our different memberships. And Brazil has one of the largest, um, uh, out, outside of the U.S., Brazil sends more people to like our events than almost any other country, which is amazing. So I, I already knew I liked Brazilians because you guys have been coming to our events for so long. I, already, I always knew that the energy was, was really great. But to get here and to see it with my own eyes and to see it in, in such a large audience, there's an entrepreneurial energy here that I'm not seeing anymore in the States. We used to have it five, seven years ago. I, there was an entrepreneurial energy in the States that it just isn't there right now. Maybe we'll get it back, but today it's just not there to the same extent that it was. It is here. And the people here that? are excited. I don't know. I mean, I, I think that, that here the, the, the web has created opportunities that didn't exist before. You know, you can. I mean, I know I did when I was in college. I was able to launch a, a successful business. I was able to start a very successful, profitable business selling to people all over the world from my dorm room at 19 when I didn't have any money and I didn't know what I was doing. That's a, that, that's a, a, an opportunity that simply didn't exist 20 years ago. And, and when I was doing it 10, 15 years ago, it was a lot harder. We didn't have all the tools that we have available to us today, the, the, the information, the knowledge, what was trapped in a handful of people's heads. It, it wasn't readily published on, on blogs and other websites. You couldn't go to YouTube and watch videos on how to do things. So I think the opportunity is there, but I think also there's just a desire um, from the people in this country. You guys don't seem like you just settle for yeah. what's there. <laughs> and I really respect that. Um, and and uh, that's why I think I think, I think Brazil's future is very, very bright. Great. That's a great thing to hear. <laughs> It's why we're here. I wouldn't fly all the way down here and we wouldn't be looking to expand the digital marketer brand into Brazil if I didn't believe that. So those aren't just words. There's actions behind them. So. 
So thank you very much for your time yeah. and congratulations for your, your speech right there. Thank you. Thank you for having great. me. great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much.